So what are the six major things fearful avoidance need to do in order to become secure? We're going to cover them in this video, and I'm going to make them really specific to the fearful avoidant in terms of the major categories of focus that you need to be honed in on. And I know that there's information out there in the attachment style world that says, if you're a fearful avoidant, you can't become securely attached. I personally used to be a fearful avoidant um, and definitely was a very serious fearful avoidant and, you know, did a tremendous amount of inner work and have really distilled this information here today. But I've seen thousands of people become securely attached between PDS, between my client practice, um, who were originally very strong fearful avoidants. So we'll talk about the reconditioning parts in this video today, the major your themes and how to really understand a lot more deeply of like what's going on and what to hone in on and focus in on. So all of this information material here is according to integrated attachment theory, um, a theory that I developed um, about uh, you know officially developed and, and actually trademarked um, uh, three or four years ago all about the major ways that attachment theory can overlap with the subconscious mind. And then these six major features, I'm going to unpack them in a lot of detail specific to the fearful avoidant, but these six major features are the different core wounds that we have at a subconscious level, the needs relationship that we have and really repairing that learning how to emotionally regulate. And that has a lot to do with our nervous system function, learning our boundaries, learning how to communicate in healthier ways and learning to upgrade our painful behaviors or coping mechanisms that we use when we're triggered. You know, for example, if a fearful avoidance really triggered, maybe they yell and it's like unpacking that and reconditioning healthier coping mechanisms. So um, those are the six major features that we're going to cover, starting with number one. When we have core wounds, you can think of core wounds as essentially being imprints that happen to the subconscious mind um, as a result of unprocessed past experiences. So for example, if you grow up in an environment where there's a lot of chaos, you might have a core wound that believes I am unsafe and constantly be trying to like control your, your world or reality um, to make yourself feel safer, you know, later on, right? It's like these core wounds, just because we acquired them a long time ago, it doesn't mean we left them in the past until we actually recondition these core wounds. They live within us at a subconscious level. So fearful avoidance have this big core wound, I am unsafe. They also have this core wound, I can't trust where I will be betrayed. I am bad. Um, fearful avoidance tend to feel an enormous amount of, of guilt and shame very easily related to the I am bad wound, um, where they really can guilt themselves for things or fear that people will think they're bad. Um, and you'll see this, sometimes it's harder for FAs to recognize this one, but you'll see this a lot in like um, the way you show up and try to prove that you're innocent or prove that you're a good person. Um, and usually this, this actually has to do with a lot of substantial punishment in childhood where you, you were walking on eggshells, you're always waiting to be seen as bad. Um, so that can be a huge one. I am unworthy is a big one. Fear of being trapped, helpless, powerless, really big. Fear of being abandoned. And sometimes the core wound, I am unloved. And then sometimes we can have other ones like I am unseen, I don't matter. Um, but but these tend to be the major, major core wounds. So I know this sounds like a lot of core wounds, but seriously, when you have it like honed in on like this and just really systemized, it's easy to knock these things out um, using subconscious reprogramming tools, a lot of which we teach inside PDS. And also, by the way, since we're talking about integrated attachment theory and these six major core themes, I actually have a whole course all about mastering this, learning to be a certified integrated attachment theory coach. So you can actually become like a relationship coach and start your own practice. And we have a whole day built out in, in the certification program of how to start your business and work from home and have freedom and flexibility. Um, and we also have um, all of the components of subconscious reprogramming, reconditioning, all the tools. And it's a great program if you want to learn more. You can use the link below, but it's a great program if you want to um, either actually become a coach and go into that space, or if you want to just like master integrated attachment theory and understand it and just become securely attached at very, you know, as quickly as possible at a very, very deep level of mastery of this content and information. So anyways, you can click link below if you want to learn more. Um, but the second piece here is the needs. A lot of fearful avoidance, what they're needing in their relationships are um, deep connection, trust, transparency so that they can trust, um, understanding of others and why they do what they can do so they can trust, um, safety, 
Acceptance is actually a huge one that FAs usually don't pick up on. Um, feeling accepted for who they are so they don't have to keep earning their worth. Um, to, to feel free, autonomous, and to feel personally empowered. These are some major needs. And when you know these things and you meet these needs in relationship to self, but also um, you know, request these needs, carve out space for these needs to be met in your relationships to others, has a huge, huge, huge impact. Um, third piece is emotional regulation. It is very important because a lot of fearful avoidance grow up in this chaotic zone in childhood um, of feeling kind of unsafe chronically. So, you know, they're often spending most of their time in, in fight or flight nervous system mode, AKA or AKA sympathetic nervous system mode. And so what we want to do is get them into parasympathetic nervous system mode, which is rest and digest mode. It's regulation mode. And when we are always in fight or flight, all of our coping mechanisms will be magnified and our world feels like it's a little sped up and small things feel much bigger. And so when we can get our set point and where we rest and spend most of our time to actually be in parasympathetic, and then it's normal to have moments of being in sympathetic, right? If there's a distressing moment, but we're supposed to be there for a quick spike and, and back to being regulated again. So, um, you know, it's important to cover how to regulate your nervous system. We have that in the course in a lot of detail as well, but learning nervous system regulation at will and learning to recognize when you're in fight or flight or when you're in rest and digest and be able able to regulate intentionally is a very powerful, powerful tool for emotional regulation. And we have some other tools for emotional regulation too. Um, number four is um, our boundaries, learning to have boundaries. And, and when we struggle with boundaries, usually it's because we have an unhealthy relationship to boundaries because they were negatively reinforced in our childhood and upbringing. So what you'll see, for example, is that um, we usually will have this dynamic of when we have boundaries, okay, um, we get punished if we set them. We get in trouble if we set them. We get shamed or criticized or we lose connection if we set them. That's not how boundaries are supposed to be. That's not supposed to be the healthy um, response to, to somebody's boundaries. But if you grow up in an unhealthy environment, you may see these things popping up more often. And so your conditioned patterns are to believe that when I set a boundary, a bad thing will happen because that was your upbringing, childhood, or past relationships. And so you have to learn to recondition that relationship to your boundaries, remove limiting beliefs you have about boundaries through subconscious reprogramming, and then practice setting boundaries once you understand them. Number five is learning to communicate, okay? Learning to communicate what your needs are to others. There's just a few quick hacks for how to communicate really effectively in a way that's not gonna have other people take things personally. That's also gonna help you be able to de-escalate conflict if somebody else around you is triggered, how to calm them down. Um, and also how to de-escalate yourself if you feel like in conflict, you're losing your ability to communicate clearly and healthily. How to re-regulate, how to approach using a few key steps to communicate in a much better way. Um, and last but not least, learning to recondition your coping mechanisms or behaviors. When you're triggered, you form a coping mechanism, and it's a way to try to get your needs met in the best way you know how. And for a lot of fearful avoidance, their coping mechanisms are, okay, I am triggered and I am going to proceed to raise my voice, for example, um, or express anger. And when you look at, okay, what is that actually meeting in terms of needs? You'll see, you'll start to understand coping mechanisms differently. When you express anger and you get really loud, guess what happens? You feel seen, you feel heard. Sometimes you feel like you're taking your power back. And it's also a way of setting boundaries, right? Because you create space and distance between yourself and somebody else. So when you realize that, hey, when I get to anger, when I use the coping mechanism of expressing anger in an unhealthy way, it's actually because I'm first feeling unseen, unheard, powerless, and without boundaries. And then you work on meeting those needs in healthier ways first. You no longer have to resort to anger and the unhealthy expression of it to get those basic needs met. So you'll learn this um, if you want to dive into the course in in all of the unhealthy coping mechanisms you have and how to unpack them, how to find others and unpack theirs and how to really recondition them by pouring into those underlying needs that your subconscious is trying to meet in an emergency way through the unhealthy expression of coping mechanism, right? So if I feel unseen, unheard, powerless and boundaryless for so long, you know, that I might resort to anger in an emergency, right? It's like, ah, oh, it's been unmet for so long. But if I learn to cater to those things regularly, 
There's no emergency that needs to happen. So these are some really important things to pay attention to. Obviously in the school, we have a lot of these different courses kind of spread out um, and, and our six really important focuses in general. But if you just want to become an expert and even learn how to help and support other people through some of these major things, again, you can check out that um, certification program that we have down using the link below. Or of course, there's a seven day free trial available to PDS in general um, to check out any of these courses. We have a course for each of these things, whether it's communication, coping mechanisms, boundaries, emotional regulation, reprogramming, and needs. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this makes a lot of sense to you. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're enjoying this channel, I put out daily content here on YouTube literally every single day um, so that you can dive in, you can learn each day. So please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you don't miss any. See you in tomorrow's video.